Deep in the heart of the Amazon rainforest, a lowly ant has just inhaled the fatal spore of a parasitic fungus species. Because this species feeds off the dead, it has other plans for the living. In short time, the ant becomes a prisoner in its own body, as cordyceps take control of its muscles to lead it out of the colony into a strange new land, and finally onto a leaf stem for its final rest. Within just a few hours, the spore bursts from the head of the ant to form a new mushroom and start the process all over again. This complex task, as well as solving mazes, reconstructing railway systems, and speaking its own language, serve as a testament to the great ancient power and awe-inspiring intelligence that is fungi. Some believe it can save the world, some believe it directed humanity towards the intelligence it possesses today. All of these different theories aside, how exactly does fungi possess intelligence, and what role has this intelligence played, and will it play, in the story of humanity? Before we get into all the history, the species, mushrooms, and theories relating to fungi, we should first get a good understanding of what I mean by fungi. Fungi are any of the millions of wildly diverse heterotrophs contained in the kingdom fungi. Heterotrophs are any organism which survives by eating other life forms, whether dead or alive, and does not survive off of sunlight like plants. Each of these millions of species have adapted their own unique way to survive and utilize their environment in order to feed themselves, grow, and reproduce. So despite their appearance, fungi are actually much more similar to the animal kingdom than the plant kingdom in the way they fit into their ecosystem, highlighted by the fact that their DNA is actually closer to ours than it is to plants. Mushrooms are probably where most people's minds go when they think of fungi, but in reality, mushrooms are just the fruit of the organism, and the majority of its biomass is disguised from us, existing in a complex structure of threads or hyphae called mycelium. Mycelium is really the essence of the fungi itself, where most of the thinking, reproducing, eating, and life processes of the organism take place. Being a fungus would basically be like having your brain, mouth, organs, and limbs spread out across a wide network of strings that you control and manipulate in part or whole in order to survive. Survival for fungi means so many different things. Just notice how I use the word think to describe one of the essential functions of the organism. The reason I use this word is because a recently developed study by computer scientist Andrew Adamatsky has reason to prove that certain mycelium networks such as the ghost or gill fungi, have developed a unique language consisting of up to 50 words made by patterns of chemical signals. Mycorrhizal networks of mycelium can use this language to do so many complex tasks, such as locating food sources, crafting defensive compounds, communicating about the environment, establishing symbiosis with plants or microorganisms, and many other highly intelligent functions. Fungi as a kingdom is a diverse arrangement of hunters, scavengers, and farmers who intelligently mold themselves and their environment in order to survive, grow, and reproduce. Were it not for the social skills of fungi, they would have likely died out many eons before we would have known they ever existed. But being as smart and adaptive as they are, fungi have managed to make themselves into an essential and necessary part of most plant survival. By using their mycorrhizal thread networks, fungi are able to absorb, distribute, and actually trade nutrients, minerals, and sugars from any wild plant species and are actively in symbiosis with around 90% of all living plants on the earth currently. Certain fungi have been found to be able to form a full-fledged chemical unity with algae in just under 24 hours of being contained together. Not only is the intertwining of the hyphae with plant roots one of the most extraordinary symbiotic relationships on this planet, this alliance dates back many eons, even before the earth had dirt. It blew my mind to think about a time even before dirt, but that would be because we as humans take so much of the geophysical processes, ecosystems, and life cycles of this planet for granted. And who do we have to thank for establishing this groundwork that allowed life to form on land hundreds of millions of years ago? You guessed it, fungi. Although the oldest verified fossils of mycelium are only about 800 million years old, some experts believe that fungi goes back as far as 2 to 3 billion years.
Around this time period, fungi would have been mainly in bodies of water, along with most of the life on Earth at the time. To give context, plants didn't appear on Earth's land until just 500 million years ago. This means that fungi predate any form of plant life on land. But when those fungi pioneers first ventured from the sea to the land in search for food, all they were met with was rocks as far as the mycelium could see. Which makes sense because after all, this planet is just one big beautiful rock. But it wasn't so beautiful about 500 million years ago. At least not until mycelium started using acidic compounds and brute force to carve its way into billions of rocks, extracting minerals that are necessary for life. But fungi cannot survive on minerals alone. They need glucose. So being the social butterflies that they are, they formed a symbiosis with algae and other aquatic protists, which are not quite plants. Fungi traded these precious minerals for glucose harnessed by algae, and over time these algae evolved into plants and founded the kingdom Plantae, as we know and love today. By the work of fungi extracting minerals from rocks along with the decay of dead plants and fungi, the dirt that sets the foundation for life on land was finally formed. And upon this foundation, the next stage of life on Earth would evolve and adapt into reality. Over hundreds of millions of years, fungi continued to organize, feed, and essentially farm plant species in order to survive and prosper. And after enough time, mycelium mats were able to form and interconnect numbers of large and diverse plant species in order to form the first forest. That's right, fungi and mycelium, more accurately, also played an essential role as the bedrock by which forests could grow and persist across time. All plants, from the smallest weed to the largest redwood, are part of a massive interconnected network referred by some as the Wood Wide Web. The Wood Wide Web, also called a mycorrhizal network, is an intertwined underground structure of mycelium by which plants and fungi communicate with each other, share resources, detect threats, and likely do much more beyond our understanding. If you didn't catch that last part, I basically said that a forest is much more than just a bunch of trees. A forest is a community of living things talking together and working together for their own betterment and greater survival. This gives us a vastly different perspective on what it means for something to be alive and aware. Who knows the significant and distinguished role this silent guiding hand of fungi may have had in the evolution of life, consciousness, and the planet itself? It may seem like I might be giving fungi a little too much credit or possibly attributing human motivations, but I would argue that we as humans understand very little about the nature of intelligence, even our own. For example, all humans live in a symbiotic relationship with a complex microbial ecosystem consisting of about one kilogram of bacteria, about the weight of our brains. This ecosystem within our bodies, which we do not control, plays a massive role in regulating neuroactive compounds in our brains, which according to the Journal of Psychiatric Research, indicate that these microbes majorly impact cognitive function and fundamental behavior patterns, such as social interaction and stress management. In the absence of microbes, underlying neurochemistry is profoundly altered. Research like this goes to show that where we may think of ourselves in complete control of our brain, body, and actions, nature actually has many ways to subtly influence our emotions and health and change our behavior and our, quote, conscious actions every day. I could go much deeper on this topic and likely will in another video, but moving on with this perspective, in what ways does or has fungi influence the development and direction of consciousness on our planet? For one, we have to remember that fungi has had its form and survived despite five mass extinctions over billions of years on this planet. The kind of understanding of natural causes and cycles of life and death that fungi have experienced and been fully ingrained in for eons of evolution has no doubt encoded into their DNA a useful ancient knowledge about the mechanisms of life, evolution, communication, and consciousness. We may have just barely peeked under the curtain into the truth and depth of fungal intelligence as it will take many more decades of research along with a different perspective on intelligence in order to fully decode the language of nature. 
But even though we may not have yet decoded the language of nature, ancient humans appear to have recognized the significant and mystical nature of mushrooms. For example, in ancient Maya and Aztec civilization, mushrooms were held in high and divine regard, known as Tio Nana Catal, which translates to flesh of the gods. A similar view has been held for millennia in religions and traditions such as Siberian shamanism, Hinduism, ancient China, Sufism, and many more in ways we likely can't yet even understand. If all these different cultures independently point to a divine significance of mushrooms, then there must be some underlying history and truth. One possible explanation for this comes from something called stoned ape theory. Originally hypothesized by Terence McKenna in the 1970s, stoned ape theory suggests that the doubling in human brain size within just a few hundred thousand years of evolution came as a result of humans eating psilocybin mushrooms millions of times, slowly developing language, tools, and basically society as a result. This may seem absurd at first glance, but if you accept the fact that psilocybin mushrooms were extremely common at the time and place of the cognitive revolution, and that those experiences would have altered at least to some extent the way individuals looked at the world, then the hypothesis is not so far-fetched. And if we accept this line of reasoning, then we can see that for some strange reason, because of fungi, we are able to transcend and wield the great power of nature and grasp deeper concepts and truths such as meaning, love, God, and our place in the cosmos. So as far as we know, we wouldn't be here on land thinking about the nature of intelligence were it not for fungi laying that foundation on many different levels. But moving forward into the future of humanity, how have we and can we best wield the power of fungi towards our prosperity? One of the first and most significant ways humanity was able to do this in recent history was through the accidental discovery of penicillin. Alexander Fleming was conducting experiments on antibacterial properties of certain bacteria using petri dishes to little success until one of the petri dishes was contaminated with mold. Upon further examination, Fleming realized that the mold had created an area free of bacterial growth, and so he realized penicillium mold would be extremely effective in combating bacteria and illness. Penicillin was made widely available and has since saved at least millions of lives from a variety of infections and took humanity one leap closer towards the prosperity of the 21st century. This is an example. Paul Stamets has been an inspiring leader on the fungal front, marching humanity closer towards accessing the full benefits and knowledge of fungi. Here are just some of the ways he believes fungi can be used to save the world. Number 1. Bioremediation Mycelium has been shown to be able to break down and consume petroleum-based fuels, heavy metals, and chemical contaminants. Oyster mushrooms have been shown to be very effective in cleaning up polluted ecosystems. Number 2. Medicinal Uses Turkey tail, reishi, lion's mane, and many more mushrooms have been shown to have unique benefits for human health, immune support, and treatment of disease. Matter of fact, Stamets himself was conducting a study on how turkey tail mushrooms could be used to treat cancer, and was actually able to save his mother from stage 4 breast cancer, eliminating the tumor entirely. Number 3. Agriculture Mycopesticides derived from fungi have proved to be much friendlier alternatives to chemical pesticides, and fungi have been shown to be extremely important in soil health and crop yields. Number 4. Insecticides Certain fungi such as this and that, because I can't pronounce them, can serve as natural insecticides. Stamets has advocated for the use in pest control to reduce the reliance on chemical pesticides. The list goes on and on to forest rejuvenation, building materials, food security, carbon sequestration, and so much more. For more on this, I encourage you to check out an amazing series on Netflix by Paul Stamets called Fantastic Fungi. Who knows what the future holds as far as the potential relationship between humans and fungi? I only hope that we can suspend our disbelief and look at the facts and studies to address the best ways that we can ethically utilize this phenomenal natural resource. 
If the future is any reflection of the past, where fungi were able to lay the groundwork for much of life and expand our intelligence, perspective, and worldview, then maybe there is a bright future ahead for humanity, despite the increasingly dark outlook on the health of this planet. But if you take anything away from this video, just remember to be grateful for the ecological haven built for us on this planet. And remember that the tools and intelligence to continue and expand this beautiful display of life are all around us, hiding in plain sight in the sky, the trees, and beneath our very feet. Thanks for watching this video. Please leave a comment if you were impacted by this video to any degree. It helps me to make the best possible videos catered to my audience. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help get this message out to a larger audience. And as always, never stop questioning, talking, and thinking. Thank you.